Hello everyone, Grade 7s, I'm with you today and it's Natural Sciences. I hope you're excited to learn more about the different properties of matter. Now, my name is Helen and our lesson today focuses on boiling point, which is a very important property of matter. So, when we talk about boiling point, what do we actually mean here? You've all experienced something boiling. You possibly have made tea or coffee and you have seen water boil in a kettle or in a pot cooking your food on the stove. So we understand that boiling means very, very hot. We understand that boiling also tends to involve bubbles forming in the liquid and vapor or gas escaping from the surface of the liquid. And in order to bring about boiling, we know we need to apply heat. So we do understand and we have experience of what boiling is. But now, what does boiling point mean? What is, what is this? Why do we add this point in? What is boiling point? point. Well, boiling point of any substance is actually the temperature at which the liquid inside our vessel starts boiling and rapidly changes from the liquid into a gas and evaporates. So when we talk about boiling, we're seeing a physical process happening in a pot. But the boiling point is the temperature at which that liquid starts to boil. So boiling point then is a temperature. It's not a process. Boiling is the process, but boiling point is a particular temperature. Now, we're going to do a little bit of a fact check here because there are two words that are very often used interchangeably, and that's okay if we're just referring to them in everyday language, but when we use these words in science, they have very specific meanings. So we're going to just clear up for once and for all the difference between heat and temperature. You've learned what heat is in previous grades, so let's revise. Heat is energy that has moved between two things when one of them is hotter than the other. So, we go back to our picture here. The pot and the fire got hotter and they then caused the liquid inside the pot to get hotter. That is what we refer to when we talk about heat. So heat is in fact a form of energy. So what then is temperature? Well, temperature is a measure of how hot or cold something is. So temperature is a measure for example, of how much heat energy has been transferred to an object. And we can measure the temperature using a thermometer. Usually, adding heat to a material is going to cause an increase in the temperature. So we can see that temperature is something that is a measure, whereas heat is a form of energy. I want you to bear those two different concepts in mind. Now let's look at another concept that you have learned about before, and it's related to heating and cooling. What are the changes in the state of matter? Now I've chosen a particular material that you are very familiar with and you can experiment with this material at home by yourself and you've seen it so many times and that is water. So I'm showing you here that water 
that you are familiar with, that you drink, that you bath in. The water is the substance in the liquid phase or the liquid state. If we take that liquid and we make it very, very cold, it will go into a solid state. And in the case of water, we call that solid state ice. If we took this liquid and we heated it up, we would produce the gaseous state of water, and that is known as water vapor. Now, solids, liquids, and gases appear different to our eyes because something interesting is happening to the particles that we can't see with our naked eye, but all matter is made up of these little particles or molecules. And in the different states or phases of matter, our little particles are behaving very differently. When we look at our particles, when we have a solid, we see that our particles lie very, very close together and they only vibrate slightly. When we look at our substance in a liquid phase, we see that the particles have more space between them and they're able to flow. Flow is a behavior that is typical of a liquid. They can move around. When we have particles in the gas state, we see that these particles have lots of space between them, and they move about rapidly. That is what the particles are doing inside water vapor. So, none of that should have been new to you. You have learned about that previously. But let's revise some of our terminology associated with these changes of state. And this is important so that we understand more about boiling point. So I want us to start with the solid state, which is ice. We can then add heat. In other words, add energy. And we will find that the temperature will increase slightly. And we have the liquid phase. If we add more heat, we are going to see that the liquid starts becoming a gas or a vapor. Now we have names for the physical processes that occur between solid, liquid and gas. What do we call it when a solid changes into a liquid? Do you remember what happens? What do we say happens when an ice block becomes liquid water? We say it melts. If we further have the liquid being converted into vapor, we say that the liquid evaporates. Now, what if we went in the opposite direction and we reduced heat or we removed heat? The gas would condense into a liquid and it could freeze into a solid. All of those terms are terms that you know about. We're focusing on boiling point, which is adding heat to a liquid in order to make it evaporate into the vapor form or the gas form. So, what is the boiling point of water? Well, in our next lesson, we're going to investigate this. But for now, you're going to accept that I'm telling you that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. 
That is how we write the boiling point of water. Remember, right at the beginning of this lesson, we said that the boiling point of a substance is the temperature at which the liquid begins to boil. And on average, water will boil at 100 degrees Celsius. Degrees Celsius is the unit that we use to show that we are measuring temperature. So if we were to add heat energy to a body of water and add more heat energy and more heat energy, we would increase the temperature of the water. And if we increase the temperature of the water to 100 degrees, we would see that it starts to boil and it starts to evaporate. Now, I've got a puzzle for you, and I hope you've got your thinking brain with you. Let's talk about the suitability of the materials making objects that must be able to hold boiling water. What can you conclude or what can you deduce about the boiling points of the materials making these objects? We know that a mug is made out of a ceramic, which is like pottery, which is a clay that has been baked. This kettle is made out of metal the same as this pot. And let's say for argument's sake that this is a modern plastic bath. So we've got three different kinds of materials here. Pottery or ceramic, we've got metal, and we've got plastic. Now all of these materials will need to hold boiling water. We know that, for example, water is going to boil in the kettle to make tea or coffee. And we're going to pour that boiling water into the ceramic mug. We know that food is going to cook inside our metal pot. And sometimes food has to simmer or boil for a long time in our metal pot. Although you don't bath at temperatures of 100 degrees because that would burn you terribly, we know that baths can hold very, very hot water. And if you were to empty the kettle into the bath for some reason, you would find that the bath would be able to hold that boiling water and that bath would be made of plastic. So, Given that, what can you conclude about the boiling points of the metal, the ceramic, and the plastic? Would those boiling points be higher than water, water's boiling point, or would they be lower? So we know that water has a boiling point of 100 degrees C. Would plastic have a higher or a lower boiling point. Well, if it's going to be able to hold boiling water, it must have a higher boiling point than water. In exactly the same way, the metal that makes up kettles and pots also has to be, those materials have to have a much higher boiling point because you don't want to boil the water and have the kettle start to boil as well. All right, you don't want to pour boiling water into your mug to make tea and have the mug start to boil. So we see that whilst certain materials like water will boil at a specific temperature, we know that other materials that have to hold boiling water need to have a much higher boiling point than the water itself. In our next lesson, we're going to investigate boiling points so I hope you'll join me then. But for today, bye-bye.